So everyone who comes to Counting and Cracking gets to have a Sri Lankan meal created by Manjula, who's the head chef at Dish. And what I love about Sri Lankan food is that in terms of its richness and its flavour, it is all about trying to deliver the fullness of life to you <laughs> in every mouth that you have. Sourcing the costumes, I worked out of Chennai, South India, and two cities in Sri Lanka, mainly Batikalo and Gaul. The clothing has to be detail specific because the play goes over a period of 40 years. And going back to 1953 or 1957, there was an era that people were very particular. They took great pride in what they wore and how they wore it. So it is not just a sari that they took and wrapped around themselves. The way they wore the sari, the fabric of the sari, the view of the sari said who they were. Who they were in the community of Sri Lanka. Who they were within the cultural background of their own community. Who they were in the fabric of the country. Definitely the Sri Lankan community will be able to see the difference in the symbols of the clothes. It's very clearly articulated. There's so much detail that's gone into reviving these old costumes and bringing the old and the new together in a single palette that I think there'll be a lot of nostalgia. You walk into the big hall at Sydney Town Hall and inside that suddenly will be a Sri Lankan kind of hall with audience on three sides and gates at the far end out of which 16 actors will emerge to fill for the next three hours and 15 minutes this community that we'll have built then and there with this extraordinary story that covers 50 years in the life of a family across two whole different countries. It's a world all of its own.